You can convince anyone of anything, man. This guy is good. He would be a great lawyer. Just saying, just a suggestion. What the just happened? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Afan, and today we're going to continue watching uh, this little show called Better Call Saul. We're in season one, episode 10. And I think this is the last episode, actually. If, uh, yeah, Marco, it is called, and it is the finale of season one. So I'm very much looking forward to this one. Before I jump into this, though, if you want to see the full length reaction to this episode and the previous episode and pretty much all the episodes of this show and also the Breaking Bad show, which I have also done in other shows and movies, you can. It's available on my Patreon. Link in the description to my Patreon. Thank you so much, patrons and everybody else for supporting me all this time. Couldn't have done this without you, man. So thank you so very much. Now then, the last episode was pretty good. Uh, a lot of uh, things were revealed. It looked like for a second there that Jimbo and Chucko were getting along really well. The McGill bros were bro in it and yeah well it didn't go all too well in the end chuck was the reason why jimmy kept getting rejected from hhm not hammer hammer and mcgill but mcgill and only mcgill so yeah this whole time i thought hammer hammer was the bad guy he still might be i mean who knows but yeah chucko his bro is the one who really doesn't want him to work there. But um, his reasoning was a bit weird. I mean, I kind of get it, you know, like I talked about this previously as well. Some of these big firms, they want people from big universities and colleges. And so if you're from a smaller community college and if uh, your GPA isn't that high either, uh, they might not consider hiring you. But the thing about that is that once you get hired, the first job you get and you do well at that first job and uh, you show that you're good, no one then cares which college you went to or what your GPA is after that point, after your first job. All people care about is what your performance was like at your previous jobs. And this guy, for all we have seen and heard, he's done pretty well. He's done really well, actually. So, um, yeah, that doesn't make much sense to me. But I suppose we'll learn a bit more what's really going on there. And, uh, yeah, it was it was very weird because, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just uh, Jimmy cares about him so much. He took care of him this whole time. And it's, uh, I don't know, it, it seems weird. It, like after all this time, after everything Jimmy's done, you still don't want him to be hired, you know, part of the deal. Like, OK, we'll share the profits and everything, but we won't hire you still. And that sounds a bit egotesticals to me, <laughs> you know, reminds me a bit of a Walt. Walt, you know, like Skylar used to say with a t at the end. But yeah, man, uh, Kimbo, uh, <laughs> I felt so bad for Kim when she came to Jimmy and she's telling him, like, just take the deal. It's best for you. You know, just take the deal. That's what's best for you. You don't want to know anything else. And then when he when she finds out, I'm like, OK, yeah, that makes sense. It was best for him to just take the deal. Uh, although it, it, it's also good to know the truth. That's also good so now he knows the truth uh how is he going to take it where is this gonna go is this the starting point of saul mcgill saul good man i don't know we're gonna find out a bit more in this one and so without any further ado let's get into the episode we had michael doing some jobs there at as well uh he's getting into the criminal world once more Oh my goodness! I thought that was Walter Jr. It's gotta be. See, I wouldn't put any money on it unless it's a trick. Huh? I'm telling you, it can't be. There's no way they hired this guy just because he's like a good actor, which I'm sure he is, but like, he kind of looked like Walter Jr. there. I think they tried to play us there. Sure. Whoa. Like, what? No way. Show me that again. Sure. You got another 20? Ah. Uh, <laughs> that's don't go away man oh that's that guy right rolex yeah hold on how much for that cheap piece of crap look what the wind blew <laughs> in it is i was like it's that guy <laughs> buttholes chuck's outside tell him to pull that broomstick out of his ass and get in here i'm buying <laughs> i'm moving to albuquerque new mexico you skip bill new mexico you know like <laughs> 
That's funny. Jimmy's friends are just like him. Like them all. <laughs> Chuck flew in and saved my ass. It's time to make some changes. Just the ass. Uh, part he likes the most. He spanks me some. It's time to grow up. The rest of your life on that stool? I mean, come on, Marco. Look at yourself. That's Marco. Paolo. It's like watching Miles Davis give up the Trump. It's just a waste. Mm hmm. Talented guy going to waste. Although his talent is scamming people, so I'm glad it's going to waste. Hey, have a safe flight, all right? Marco. My friend's name is Marco. He used to say Polo all the time whenever they would call his name in school, in a class. I don't know what that meant. Everybody would laugh. I'm like, okay. Ooh. I now know what that means, yeah. Well, kind of. It's like a game or something. I don't know. Whatever. I don't care. Okay, now we're in the current time. Hey, Kimbo! What's up? Is that that ham lin lingo dingo or whatever blue <laughs> on the wall or the stairs? Given the case to HHM. Why? The fact that Chuck doesn't want me here has something to do with it. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Why didn't you just tell me? I just... I didn't want you hating your own brother. If any of those geezers don't want to sign with you, just give me their names. I'll talk them into it. A geezer, what we call at least, is one of those tank thingies that warms up your water. Sorry I called you a pig. <laughs> well. Well, you were entirely wrong. Don't tell that to Chuck. <laughs> He's the pig I was fucking. You know, don't tell him. You know, we aren't just partners in business, if you know what I mean. Anyway. Shopping list for Chuck. I mean, he's doing better, but <laughs> this guy. Comfortable with someone else. <gasps> Sell cares. I usually sneak into a motel and fill a garbage bag, but you can. <laughs> uh, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, they're a must. This guy looks impressed. Hamo. Just to bring it in for him. You've been doing all of this every day? Oh, yeah. Okay. He's impressed. Over a year. This is a bro. You'll take care of this? Absolutely. That's his bro. I always liked you, Jimmy. I used to call you Charlie Hustle. Yeah, I remember that. Wow, it's weird. It's that trash can again. But why do I like Hamo? I like Hamo all of a sudden. I mean, I kind of started to like him. Well, not really like him, but like I kind of felt bad for feeling like the way I did towards him. Do you know what I mean? But now I actually like him. That was nice. <laughs> Not a crime to let it out. There's nothing to let out. He's my brother. He thinks I'm a scumbag. There's nothing I can do to- Still, that's a thing. Like, at one point, he, you actually were. Wow, that's mature. Jimbo, but- Dalai Lama's got nothing on me. <laughs> Just like the B2 bomber, the stealth. Still no winners? <laughs> no? <laughs> Here we are. B4. Hey, it's our old friend B. B12. Oh. As in B12 year old. B as in uh, B as in brother. The trail. Oh. Betrayed the United States. Brother betrayed. Still no winners. Bingo. No. Here it is. B again? Oh, it's a B, isn't it? Oh, what are the, uh, the blue ones are the Bs, right? Oh, blue, B. B as in... Brother. Brother. Betrayal, brother. B7. Seven brides for seven brothers. <laughs> sure a lot of you have brothers. It's not like mine, though. Any winners yet? <laughs> oh, I feel bad for him. Another B could have a real problem here. Uh oh. It's, it's blue again? Oh, okay. B5, as in, boy, this B thing is really starting to tick me off. <laughs> B and B as in Belize. Hey, who's going to Belize? Hey, <laughs> very beautiful place. Oh, I don't think you wanna. None of us is ever leaving this godforsaken wasteland. Uh oh. Uh oh. B. Sorry. 
Scratch that. Me again? I mean, look out that window. It's it's like a soulless, radioactive George O'Keefe hellscape out there. <laughs> George O'Keefe, that's the, the vagina lady, right? It's another friggin' me. Well, of course. Why not? And the next number? It didn't say the number. Oh. Come on, say the number, bro. Who here knows what a Chicago sunroof is? Anybody? You, sir? No? Okay. Chicago sunroof. He might have slept with my wife before she became my ex-wife. I was wrong. I was He's losing it. Drinks. I climbed up top and I may have defecated uh, through the sunroof. Not my finest hour. I'll grant you that. It depends on the size. It's a real thing. Okay. I didn't make it up. I'm not the first person to do it. There's a name for it. Guy wanted some soft serve. I gave him some soft serve. Chocolate flavor. No, that his children were in the back seat. Oh. There was a level. There was a level of tint. It was not legal. But somehow, that's on me. I guess. That is on you. Now, chat was connected, so usually I'd be looking at malicious mischief. Still going. Wow. But he's got the DA calling me a sex offender. What? Yeah. Two kids were there. Charles Manson? And that's where it all went off the rails. Don't know who that is. Good catch. You know what? Any of this stuff you want, come get it. Kitty cat notebooks for everybody. Mic drop. Hopefully not. Ermine truck drop, though. <laughs> Come on. Chicago. Marco. One for him, yep. In his ear? Yeah. <laughs> what do you How long will you keep me waiting? Mm. Wake up, you fat son of a bitch. <laughs> Watch your beer. Hey. <laughs> Fire department comes. They stick one end of the hose on the hydrant, the other end goes on the standpipe. Water goes oh, the, the standpipe through the... How's your mom? Uh, she passed away. It's a great lady. From Wisconsin, right? Yeah. Funeral out there? Ever been to Wisconsin? Here. Rose? <laughs> Wanna scam him? Wanna slip with me, Marco? You're buying. I'm selling. Hmm. All right then. Let's do this. Buttholes all around. You see it? I see a Kennedy half dollar. <laughs> Which way is he bait? So the assassination just destroyed him. I'm telling anybody, he flipped things around so that Kennedy was facing west. There's still 200 plus floating around out there. What's that? I didn't catch that. Six or eight hundred bucks. I'm hard up, so I'll take uh, one hundred dollars for it. You want mm. me to give you a hundred dollars? I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna go drain the snake. Think about it. <laughs> drain the snake. <laughs> and when he tells me this is a scam, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call the cops and get the scumbag thrown in the can. You're my witness, okay? <laughs> no, he's in the middle of this. <laughs> <gasps> uh, mine as well. About this uh, 50 cent piece. He says Kennedy's supposed to be facing west. Yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh, we got his interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, listen, I gotta go. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, I owe you one. <laughs> How is he able to hear him across the table with all this music playing and everything? He's speaking pretty quietly. I, I, sorry, I need a hundred. Hey, Slick, nobody's talking to you. Mind your own business, okay? Come on. Cash money, $80. Okay, I was getting time. ready to call no, cops on you. I what? was not. Why would you do that? Now this guy is making I got 110 right here. Sold. No, 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 no. no this no, guy's no. got the cash. No. Don't do care, that. Take care of that. It's history right there. <laughs> you can't do that. Hey. Money talks, you're lost, it's over. <laughs> Slipping Jimmy and Marco. 
<laughs> Got him. <You> so beautiful. <laughs> hey, everybody. Next round's on us. We just got ourselves 110. Damn, son. Well, he's a Nigerian prince. The dictatorship of Equatorial Ukbar or Beast is detaining him on trumped up charges. Now the Abbasi family, they're going crazy. They will reward whoever helps them get their boy back. And their assets, I'm talking Irish sweeps tickets, a whole trunk. I know what you're saying. The dream team's back. Aye. <laughs> he gave up on his elder law thing. It's been my family. So you're going to have the most return on your dollars. But I know this customs officer. The upside? The upside is huge. Can you keep a secret? You know, the guy in dances with... You are not Kevin Costner. <laughs> I was last night. Uh, he's not Jesus either. Uh, he's got an asshole. I don't know who Kevin Costner is, but he is that guy from The Conjuring. He definitely is that. Wait! Oh, he did say that, didn't he? Are you sure he's not a manager? Yes, Lucy, <laughs> I am sure. They got both of them. Police stick around long enough to get dressed. Oh, oh, screw you. If you build it, I will come. <laughs> Uh, but he, yeah, he mentioned that in uh, Burma, I believe. <laughs> he really did convince me. Eh? You can convince anyone of anything, man. This guy is good. He would be a great lawyer. Just saying, just a suggestion. Something to think about. Uh, so what's it gonna be today, pal? That's it. Oh, you gotta go back to work. All right. What? what do you gotta go back to? My clients. What are you, what are you like a gigolo or something? <laughs> Didn't he say that I'm not a gigolo? When when they said no, uh, <laughs> no, no soliciting. I do elder law with states. So you're ripping off old people. Pretty much. <laughs> Charging them 140 to write stuff on papers. I know, it's a pretty good deal. I like making final orders, but I get it. Not an idiot, well. <laughs> that second statement is questionable. Slip and Jimmy's a lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you want to go. Gotta be king of the desert, driving around town in a white caddy making bank. I'm not making bank. With respect, you're a lawyer, and you're not making bank. You're doing it wrong. Well, Bro, you, you gotta make a bank. Gotta get a lot of approvals, you know? State and federal <laughs> charters. You need a lot of capital as well to make bank. <laughs> However, the caddy, mm, you know, I see what you did there, show. I see what you did there, show. White caddy, Marco, I think you're cute. Yes, kind of. <laughs> Last time we did what? 600? The hot streak were on. I bet we break a grand easy. I could lend you some cash. I don't need the money, Jimmy. Just wants to do the thing, yeah, okay. I need to do the thing! I gotta tell you, standpipes ain't cutting it for me, man. I got nothing, Jimmy. Give me this. Last ride, let's do this. You're already cold and sick, bruh. Uh-oh. Come on, come on, come on I'm listen to me. I'm, I'm listening. Hey, come on, just hey. one last time. Come on. Not being hypnotized. <laughs> <laughs> to me, I'm listening. No. Come on. <laughs> All right, they're doing it. <laughs> I don't like the quiet, man. I know this show is different, but when other show are dead quiet like that, it, it's just something bad always happens. Batman's gonna slit his throat. I think he's the Joker. <laughs> Got cancer? Need to make 700k for his family before he dies? And do it with a Rolex. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. It is the howling. Just like a wolf. Go ahead. I knew it. Deeper. I called it. Mm. That's a signal. Hey. It's prehistoric. Hey, hey, look. 
buttholes. <laughs> Is he actually sleeping? Look, this guy's just had too many. I say we move on. Marco, you okay? Marco? Hey, call 911. Call 911! Whoa, he's actually out? Whoa, he actually has cancer. He sold the money. Sold the wallet. I need an ambulance. My friend's having a heart attack. We're in an alley uh, southeast of LaSalle and Shermer. No, I, I don't know. He was like this when I He's playing him? Hey, hold. Marco, Marco, you with me? You with me? Oh, no, you did, you did good, buddy. Just the hell happened. All right, there are... This was the greatest week of my life. Hey, 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 hang in there. Hey, 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 wake up. Man. No, come on, come on. his eyes are open. He's dead. Help! Anybody? What the hell just happened? My voice, like what the? F Is that his? The guy just died. His mom gave it to me. I thought it looked familiar. I figured I'd wear it today, but that's the ring he normally wears. Still, could be worth a couple of bucks. Shut up, man. Could be worth a couple of bucks. That was unexpected. <laughs> That's the greatest week of my life. It's getting too big for HHM. Howard's decided to partner with another firm. Davis and Maine, you heard of them? Sure, up in Santa Fe. Right. Well, they've heard of you too. They want you? And they're interested. They want to make you an offer contingent on an interview. They've got a partner track position in Oh, come on. That's how he gets back at Chuck. You know, Chucky, Chucky Cheese, Pimento Cheese, you didn't want me. Guess what? I'm on the case still. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't even, uh, Chuck wouldn't like it. Yeah. The charity thing? What's the angle on Jimmy, we've been talking to your clients, and they ask about you every chance they get. <laughs> yeah. He's a charming dude. Well, I have a feeling after what you did last time around, it might not as much, but they could be forgiving. Who knows? Thank you. That didn't do anything. Much. And believe it or not, Howard's been pushing this too. Good old Howard. Howie. Ammo. The Davis and Maine people will be there. Perfect chance. Oh. Thursday at 11. All right, I'll be there. Thanks, Kim. Really. I'll see you then. Kimbo and Hambo. <laughs> That's too far, ham. <laughs> Just hammo. Fuji's should be in season. It's not a major issue, but yeah. Fuji apples. Okay. Oh, and I'd like to try soy milk, so maybe a half gallon of that. Well, thank you, Ernesto. I appreciate your attention to detail. Well, when it comes to attention to detail, Jimbo's your guy. Yes, to be sure. Or your brother. So, Fuji apples. And hate him so much right now. Get in the ring with me. It's Jimbo, Jimbo, and Miguel. Yeah. Hey, Ernie. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, good. He knows all these guys, right? Because he used to work with them in the mail room and, uh, you know, all that. See Start when he was turning. Is that that Rolex that he's wearing? Is he gonna come in? He's gonna lock the door. Is he gonna confront him? I think he wanted to go out of there to confront Jimmy. Maybe talk to him. I'll be there. Man, shit happens. Come on, you're bros. Put it behind you. Move on. No grace. <laughs> Ooh. 
wonder who that was. Well, I mean, I know who it was, Dr. Dude, but I'm, I wonder who he's talking about. Nacho. Nacho business. Or could it be Gus? Potentially. Nice. But I think it might be the Chuck group. Not Chuck. Tuco, Nacho, you know, them boys. I think it might be a bit early for Gus. What's going on? Bring remind him of, uh... Going back? Did I dream it? Or did I have $1,600,000 on my desk in cash? When I close my eyes, I can see <laughs> burned into my retinas like I was staring into the... Look at the way he's smiling at him. We could have gone home with $800,000 each, tax-free. Your point being? <laughs> you want to know why I didn't take that money? Is that what you're asking? It was hired to do a job. I did it. It's as far as it goes. Wow. Well, I know what stopped me. It's never stopping me again. Wow, that is a brilliant scene right there. First with what Mike said, because that's pretty much Mike, right? I had to do a job. I was there to do a job, did the job. I'm out. And now this guy. There it is. <laughs> all right. So he's tall now. All right. Time to get that white caddy and make a bank. All right. That's the end. Okay, then. Wow. Wow, this was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. So now we know that Jimmy is going to be Saul. And this is what happened. A betrayal from his brother. He still had a chance, though. He still had a job on the line. Anyways, before we get more into it, if you want to see the full length reaction and early access to these videos, you can. It's available on my Patreon. Link in the description to my Patreon. Thank you so much, all of you, for supporting me all this time. Now then. Pretty good season so far. Loved every bit of it. Love the sense of humor. It's a bit more funny than Breaking Bad, and I really like that. As you guys know, I uh, I like I like uh, having fun, man. I like laughing. So yeah, but yeah. So what stopped me before? I know what stopped me before, and it's not going to stop me again. What stopped him before? Was it doing the right thing? Was it Chuck? Might have been Chuck actually. Doing the right thing has never really been Saul's thing, neither Jimmy's, because we saw Jimmy. Jimmy was slipping before as well. So that would have been, that, that leaves Chuck then. Maybe Kim, Kimbo? But I'm pretty sure it's Chuck because, so they talked about the Chicago sunroof, which by the way, with the kids in the car, we no longer claim. I would like to, I would, I, everybody, hear me out. Be quiet, please. I'd like to make an announcement. We no longer claim Jimbo as our guy, okay? With kids in the car. But that's where it started, right? So we got that flashback and he does the thing and then he's in the jail and Chuck E. Cheese comes in and tells him, sort of makes him, you know, beg basically to get him out of jail and uh, tells him, no, he has to go straight. And he does go straight after. Well, he does go sort of straight it's a little bit of gay <laughs> you know what i mean he, he starts to do, do the right thing and we see him do the right thing although there are certain moves that he makes that are questionable the bigger mission his like overall goal is clean and it's doing the right thing and i think it is chuck uh that's uh, evident from that scene not just that but also then the um scenes afterwards where he's getting the diploma and he's working for hhm and he's trying to walk the straight path and he leaves marco as well and so uh, and and i mean I'm, obviously marco means a lot to him and at that by the way that, again we met marco for just a couple of scenes here and just a couple of scenes in the previous episodes and we care about him so much all this time you know we man it was very impactful that last line that he said wow what a line that was as well this was the greatest week of my life and you know him saying that um sandpiping or whatever isn't cutting it for me i don't need the money i need this right the, the thrill of it or whatever it is that he's chasing all right this is the next day um i just wanted to add this little bit to it as well because this is the season finale and yesterday I actually had to be somewhere so i kind of 
rushed through my little review there and I had a bit more to say. So I was like, you know what, let me add it to it since it is the season one finale. Uh, so yeah, so just some thoughts that I didn't mention in the, uh, the other day. Um, so I talked about how I, I felt for Marco. I, I kind of liked Marco, even though he is a scammer guy, I still liked him. And I think the reason behind that is that I see Jimmy in him. So when I think about Marco, I kind of see him like Jimmy. So I see him as a good guy, someone who can do good, someone who tries to do good, but he just doesn't get that satisfaction from it. And also, he doesn't get appreciated enough for it. Same exact situation as Jimmy, right? That's how Jimmy was. So he went straight, he did the right thing, but it just wasn't enough. He wasn't getting paid enough. He wasn't getting appreciated enough. He wasn't getting anything. He, his own brother wasn't even appreciating him. His own brother didn't want to hire him in his firm after he showed so much potential and so much talent. And, you know, he's a smart guy. We see that he is smart. And once he gets his mind on something, he gets it done. And he got this massive case. I mean, it got such a massive case, such a huge case, that even HHM is not enough. They have to go to a different firm, join teams. Two different firms have to work on it. Who made this happen? This guy. Still, they do not, or he, the bro, does not believe in him. And so I see that, but we haven't seen anything from Marco. So I could very much be wrong. But because these two are pretty much shown to us like similar characters, they don't get that thrill out of doing normal things you know they're different they don't just want a nine to five they want a different kind of job it doesn't have to be scamming it just so happens that they're good at scamming and they work together and they know how to do this so they're doing that i mean i'm sure if they're given a different chance and a chance to do something else something legal that is a bit more fun that gives them that thrill right that this gives them they'd be more than happy to do that Again, a lot of assumptions being made here. But we have Jimmy to go off of, and Jimmy is a good guy. We saw that, right? We, he has his ways, obviously. But for the most part, he is a good guy. And if he is like that, then again, an assumption is being made. Marco is a good guy. And that's why, even though we spent so little time with Marco, we felt really bad. Well... I say we, I should say I felt bad for him. I'm not entirely sure about you. I'm not sure how you felt about it. Do let me know how you felt about him as well. But I really did feel bad for him. Another thing I wanted to talk about was Jimmy there at the end driving out and saying, I knew what stopped me before, it's not going to stop me again. It's quite interesting because, you know, we saw that little speech from Chuck and it was quite well really well produced as well the side by side between mike and chuck right mike saying well just because something is illegal or illegal doesn't mean it's right or wrong you know the wrong like the law does not equal morality right so that that's what Maiko is doing and then on the other end you got chuck e cheese who's telling uh, jimmy how the law is sacred and the law must be protected and the law this and the law that and so if the law is sacred and Jimmy is hurt right now and he thinks that his brother betrayed him, then what is he going to do? Well, he's going to commit sacrilege. What is that? That is going against the law. That is doing things to sort of make a mockery of the law. The law is the law to Chuck E. Cheese. And so what is Jimbo going to do? He's going to make a mockery of that thing that this guy upholds, this guy cares about so much that it means hurting his own brother like actually hurting him <sighs> john i mean after everything he's done for him that's the part i can't get over it's like all right fine you're a jackass after everything that jimbo did still i'm trying to be objective and objectively Initially, if he doesn't want to hire him, I'm like, all right, fine. I've already explained this, why it's fine, right? There's no good reason for him to be this way now. But he is like that. So yeah, I thought I should add that to it. This was a great first season, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if I said it in that video or not, but it was a fantastic first season. 
an amazing setup. So, you know, that was great. And then he dies, like for realsies, he just dies. So he does the thing that he's wanted all this time and he does it and he just dies. So he dies happy, I guess there's that. But uh, that was interesting. It was funny, it was happy, it was... It was great and then it was kind of sad the way it ended and he got the ring i knew i'd seen that ring more than once <sighs> we got to hear about uh the kevin costner thing which was in burba it took me a second to recall it but i recalled it they commented on the white caddy they commented on him making a bank although i don't remember so good bank limited <laughs> you know i know what he means making a lot of money white caddy uh, scamming people off. You're a, ro you're a real lawyer. No, he's a criminal lawyer. So a lot of references, a lot of foreshadowings. There's a lot of setup going on. And uh, that, that drive by right there with Mike at the end. Perfect. Like just drives into just on his way to becoming Saul. Good man. So, yeah. It's pretty interesting. But um, yeah, so back to uh, Jimbo and Chaco's relationship. It would seem that Hamo was a good guy this whole time. I mean, he's not that good of a guy because like I said, he hasn't treated Kim all that well. You know, what what happened with uh, the Kettlemans. So no, he's not that great of a guy. He's still kind of a douchey baggy. <laughs> what? But uh, he, he's, um, you know, like Kim said, ha Howard's been the one trying to push you here as well, as well as the, uh, the, the people, the clients, the elderly, right? They like uh, Jimbo, so they want him. But uh, Howard has done it. And Kim, obviously. So, I mean, we love Kim. Kim is great. Kim is amazeball. So we're not going to say, I mean, you know, we already knew that. That's nothing new. Kim is the goat. Like, oh, come on. You know, so obviously she did great, but Howie, that's Hamo Hamo. Uh, that's a change right there, right? Because we saw him as the villain, as the bad guy, as the evil one, as the one putting hurdles in Jimbo's way throughout this first season. It turns out he wasn't really the one doing that. And even when he was like the Hamdingle ago, whatever, blue. I mean, that was a real thing. Like, that's just him ripping you off straight up. And anybody would have a problem with that. It's not a Hamlin thing. It's just a legal thing, right? But the things that seemed personal, the things that seemed like Hamo was the one against this guy, wasn't actually Hamo. It was Chuck E. Cheese. That prick. And when he rejects him, or, or he doesn't directly reject, he doesn't even have the balls to reject him, by the way, face to face. He has to make uh, Howard do it. So fine. People will say nepotism, whatever. You don't want that. Cool. Later down the, the road, when this guy has proven himself all this time, why is it still a problem for you to hire him? He has proven to you that he's clean. He's doing the right thing. He's good. He can go the extra mile. He can do pretty much anything, really. He's got this ability, this attention to detail. He can be a great lawyer. He's very convincing. People love him. He's got this charisma. He's an amazing lawyer. You saw that. He's willing to go the extra mile. Still, why? I guess we'll find out, but it's really heartbreaking, man. Brother betrayal. Bingo. And he just loses at the bingo game. I hope that's not too much of a problem for him going forward. It seems like it's not. He's still moving on with the, the whole Saul Goodman thing. It seemed like for a moment that he was going to go back to being a lawyer and maybe he was going to work for Davis and Maine. I'm not entirely sure. Is he still going to do his elder law thing? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah. It was uh, it was very interesting. And, and also, by the way, Kim saying that Howard was the one who was actually uh, pushing for you to get a job at Davis and Maine makes sense to me because in that scene where Jimbo and Hamo are facing off and they're sort of apologizing and sort of like like saying their goodbyes and Jimbo is giving him the list of groceries and stuff like that, the shopping list. In that scene, Hamo actually genuinely seems impressed that Jimbo is doing all this thing and he ha he's been paying attention to him and he's been taking care of ha uh, Chuck and he's doing this for over a year. So he was genuinely impressed. You could see it on his face. He was very impressed with him. And honestly, I think if it wasn't, if Chuck wasn't, in the equation, Hamo might have hired our guy Jimbo, you know? And I think he saw the potential there and he 
pushed him for Davis and Maine to hire him. And, I, I, you know, it makes sense now. But uh, anyway, this was a great season, great setup. I like the slow burn. I like the setups that they're putting in. I think Michael might be doing something with the Nacho and Tuco gang. Or maybe it's Gus if it is Gus. Get in, mate. I would love to see Gustavo Fring. But yeah, I'll take more Nacho as well. I like Nacho as well. Like I said, I like the actor. Don't know much about the character, though. But yeah, I'm very excited to see season two. And if you are as well, do drop a like. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And uh, like I said, if you want to see it first, the next episode's first episode of season two, head over to my Patreon link in the description. Check it out. They go early, the episodes, and also full and three actions are there as well. Thank you so much, all of you, for supporting me all this time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, have a nice...